This one might be a little above my pay grade. No, really, my channel focuses on consumer electronics, but I absolutely love rugged gadgets. So when Panasonic reached out about their new Android tablet offerings, even though this is definitely more of an enterprise solution, I needed to take it for a spin. As enterprise gadgets have migrated out of old Windows CE embedded solutions, Android has stepped up as one solution for companies utilizing mobility products for employees. The Tough Book line of laptops is iconic, a brand with 20 years of hardware under that label. I really just like manhandling a gadget. We got this chunky shell properly certified to IP65 dust and water resistance and Milspec 810H drop and shock protection. Now, this kit is designed for warehouse, remote work, field work, in nearly any environmental conditions a human might need a data-connected device. But just like the Big Brother laptops, a protective shell shouldn't mean a sealed, glued shut, non-repairable experience. Now, the A3 makes a huge impression for modular construction and customization. Port covers are covering the headphone jack, USB-A, USB-C inputs. The rear panel has an expansion area for a barcode scanner, a smart card reader, or the ability to add another USB port. Dual batteries on the rear of the tablet are not only user accessible, but hot swappable. There's a stylus silo on the side of the tablet, and five of the buttons on the front face around the screen can be user assigned based on employee needs. It's instantly clear what kind of audience Panasonic is aiming this tablet at. Warehouse, construction, surveying, first responders, military use. Base model tablet is brutally built. And then options and accessories complete the experience for a variety of unique applications. The actual gadgety stuff is built around that philosophy. The A3 is conservative where IT contracts care about costs and then overbuilt in ways that should help minimize long-term support issues. Now, like this screen, it's a 10 inch HD display. It's not a juicy HDR video OLED and the viewing angles are what I would call fine. The flip side to that, this is one of the brightest screens you can find on a tablet, up to 800 nit brightness, and it's built to detect moisture on the screen, so you can still use the touch screen even when the tablet is wet. The mono loudspeaker, not the prettiest multimedia solution, but it gets really loud, which is nice if you need to hear voice and video calls above worksite or construction noise. The built-in storage is a little lean, but it supports micro SD card expansion, not just dual SIM LTE support. It's also certified for FirstNet if you're outfitting firefighters and paramedics. The tech internals follow a similar philosophy. This tablet isn't gonna set the world on fire as a multimedia gadget. The mid-ranger chipset is plenty powerful for a number of applications, but this Snapdragon is one that Qualcomm and Google are looking at as a business tier solution for longer term support. If you're familiar with tough books, there's an expectation of really long life cycles and years of available accessories after the initial deployment. It's impossible to predict exactly how long a device will last, but speaking with Panasonic reps, they're aiming for a four to five year life cycle with several years of parts availability after that for things like batteries. The tablet out of the box comes with a three year warranty. There's a lot of confidence in this this build and that software side is just as well considered. This is an ultra clean build of Android. Panasonic has a handful of pre-installed services built for IT departments, you know, an app to map the buttons. I could, I could demo the barcode scanner and run a few diagnostics. And that's about it. It's as close to a blank slate as you can get otherwise. I threw a couple games on there, but that's probably not something firefighters are going to do. Probably. So it seems a little silly trying to benchmark it like that. Support takes on a bit of a different meaning when we're talking enterprise. Companies aren't as concerned about getting each iteration of Android as an operating system. Now, they probably don't care much about night mode or pretty animations or better notification bubbles, but the security side is critical. So patches, bug fixes, and an expectation of longer support windows. Replacing those old Windows CE gadgets, Google is offering a slightly different flavor of Android when it's enterprise certified. That's paired up with Panasonic's own Productivity Plus suite for device maintenance and for helping companies deploy software or image a fleet of devices. All of this is less entertaining and consumer exciting, but it makes for a longer lived and better supported ecosystem. In the consumer space, 
our phones and tablets are more exciting from year to year, but that also kind of makes them more disposable. It's a higher churn rate. All of that combined, the A3 makes a solid case for an Android tablet being introduced into the Toughbook lineup. Build rugged, long support expectations, and an ecosystem of accessories and parts. Android is in an interesting position when looking at these kinds of solutions. Android tablets don't really light up the consumer space. There are so many business applications where this level of computing power makes sense, where you don't quite need the flexibility or legacy software of Windows 10 or the browser-based focus of something like a Chromebook. So we know Panasonic won't be making much of a consumer push for this slate, but I can't help feel that there are some folks out there who would really enjoy some of these ideas trickling into the consumer side. I don't think a family tablet needs to be built to this spec, but I implore manufacturers out there. I mean, even Panasonic, if you're listening, a more consumer accessible version of this would make a lot of folks happy. Maybe pay a little more upfront for a commitment to longevity and support, especially if it's advertised as a selling point upfront. I have to believe there's a market out there that's currently underserved. Most of the attention for tablets points in one very specific direction, but a few more companies showing that they can take a tablet seriously, that they'll stick around in this space and that they can make focused solutions for a variety of work situations. A few more examples like this, might breathe a bit more life into tablet competition. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these reviews and subscribing to the channel. This was a fun little tangent of a video to make. It kind of took me back to my government contractor days. This is exactly the kind of hardware I loved playing with while I was working on a Department of Energy contract. So it's just fun coming back and dabbling in that space. So if you would like to help support the production of more diversion videos like these, there are some links down below. There's the support page over on somegadgetguy.com, or you might consider joining the list of names currently scrolling by on your screen. Now, that's a growing community of fun, like-minded tech pals, a huge resource for me as I'm planning future videos and reviews. They're super cool people, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at Some Gadget Guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, and the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next review.